You're listening to The Stephen Toriello Show, building a platform of liberty for people in search of truth with a dash of hope and a life worth living. The Stephen Toriello Show. And now, here's Stephen. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the show. As always, thank you for tuning in. Shocking story coming out of Israel. So the Taliban is asking Iran for passage across country to assist Hamas in annihilation of Israel after Joe Biden just armed the Taliban with $80 billion in U.S. weapons and supplies. You guys remember this. This administration, Joe Biden, should never, ever be able to get away with not paying the political price for his disastrous and deadly withdrawal from Afghanistan. I told people when this happened, this was going to have ripple effects all throughout this country and throughout this world. And these people just wanted to pass it on and try and pretend like Joe Biden knew what the hell he was doing. This guy does not know what he's doing. And it's shocking to me that people are surprised that our foreign policy and our foreign diplomacy is a freaking disaster. When you have Joe Biden as commander in chief that has been wrong on every single foreign policy issue for the last five decades, his entire career. This is a statement made by Barack Obama's secretary of defense. How? What type of what what type of political price should Joe Biden have to pay if any of these weapons, this 80 billion dollars worth of weapons and supplies that the Biden administration left over there in Afghanistan is is used against American soldiers. What type of price should Biden have to pay if any of those weapons and supplies ends up being used against our ally Israel? Seriously, this is how damaging and dangerous this guy is to national security. He's not just a danger and a threat to this country, but he is a danger and a threat to other countries. The man is weak, he is feeble, He is dumb. Joe Biden is good for one thing and one thing only, and that is benefiting Joe Biden. This guy doesn't care about anybody. He will be anything that he has to be in order to get people to like him. That is why he's able to stay in Washington, D.C. for 50 freaking years, man. What has Joe Biden contributed to this country in order for him to stay in our government as a senator and a public service member for five decades? Milking the American taxpayer. What has he contributed? How has he earned that money? He has done nothing. And now these people make this guy the most powerful person in the country? It's insane. It is insanity we are watching this. But I knew. I knew that Afghanistan, that that debacle of a withdrawal of Afghanistan was going to have consequences. And this is exactly the type of stuff I knew we were going to see. It's no wonder that Russia invaded Ukraine. It's no wonder that Hamas is now attacking Israel. What did people expect was going to happen? This guy is a walking human pandemic. He is a human wrecking ball. Everything this guy touches, it turns to crap. So, I I mean, I, I, I don't know why people are surprised that we don't have peace and prosperity in these foreign countries. Because Joe Biden is awful. And you know, so what I'm going to do is we're going to go through. I got a story here from Jim Hoft. We're going to go through the $80 billion in U.S. weapons and supplies that Joe Biden and his administration, his disastrous administration, left in Afghanistan because of the disastrous withdrawal. So earlier today, Hamas terrorists launched launched a major surprise attack on Israel. The Islamist group fired over 5,000 missiles inside Israel and launched numerous attacks across southern Israel. This assault comes just weeks after Joe Biden sent $6 billion to Iran in September. The last time the U.S. gave stacks of money to Iran was during the Obama years, and Iran launched a massive military buildup. This time, it took four weeks before Iran's proxy army in Gaza launched a historic military assault on Israel on the Sabbath. 
Earlier this morning, Joe Biden's U.S. Office of Palestinian Affairs urged Israel not to defend itself from the 5,000 missile attack and mass kidnappings and killings by Hamas. And here's a tweet from Representative Claudia Tenney. You're never going to believe this. So here's a post from U.S. Office of Palestinian Affairs. It says, we unequivocally condemn the attack of Hamas terrorists and the loss of life that was incurred. We urge all sides to refrain from violence and retaliatory attacks. Terror and violence solves nothing. (laughs) These people. So Israel gets attacked by 5,000 missiles. And the U.S. Office of Palestinian Affairs reaches out and says there should be no retaliatory attacks. So you're just so what are they supposed to do? Just sit there and just let them and just get bombed? So Representative Claudia Tenney uh responded to this post that was put out by the United States Office of Palestinian Affairs. And she said We cannot conflate terrorists targeting Israel Israeli civilians and our greatest ally in the region defending itself. Whomever wrote this tweet must be fired and the Biden administration must publicly denounce this shameful tweet. I agree. But is anybody surprised? I'm serious. Every worst possible outcome you can think of, this Biden administration has done. I have been saying this for months. There is no freaking way they can be this bad on accident. Even a broken clock is right twice a day. This administration has messed up everything. This administration has gotten everything wrong. And it's unfortunate that it's people's lives are at stake. People, it's not like some innocent mistake, like a, 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 a mean tweet or exaggerating how big your inauguration day crowd size is. Like these mistakes are actually costing lives between the 13 soldiers in Afghanistan. And now I don't know how many people here. But rest assured, that $6 billion that the Biden administration released to Tehran is directly connected with this military assault. Mark the date. Because I'm telling you, we're going to find out that that's $6 billion. And it's so, it's, and it's just so shocking how naive Democrats are when they came out in defense of the release of $6 billion to a country that hates us. How can these people def- continue to defend this administration? It is incredible. So I want to get back with I want to get back to this article. So now this, the Jerusalem Post is reporting that the Taliban has requested free passage across Iran to assist Hamas in Gaza in its war on Israel. Please note, Joe Biden armed the Taliban with 80 billion dollars in US weapons and supplies when he surrendered to the Taliban and fled Afghanistan in 2021. Joe Biden supplied the Taliban terrorist organization and their Islamist accomplices with billions of dollars worth of U.S. weapons, armed vehicles, helicopters, ammunition, and piles of cash. Rather than destroying the equipment before leaving the country, Joe Biden surrendered nearly $85 billion worth of U.S. military equipment to the Taliban. That includes 600,000 weapons, 200 aircrafts, 75,000 vehicles, and $85 billion dollars worth of funding to the Afghan army. In fact, Joe Biden left 300 times more guns than those passed to the Mexican cartels in Obama's Fast and Furious program. The Taliban later released video of the weapons Joe Biden left behind and a room full of stacks of $100 bills Joe Biden left for good measure. The Taliban posted videos of pallets of weapons and stacks of $100 bills they seized. And here is a complete list of U.S. supplied and left behind equipment now controlled by the Taliban. So we got 2,000 armored vehicles, including Humvees and MRAPs, 75,989 total vehicles, including FMTV, M35 Ford Rangers, Ford F-350s, Ford vans, Toyota pickups, and armored security vehicles. They left 45 UH-60 Black Hawk helicopters. 50 MD-530G Scout Attack Choppers, Scan Eagle Military Drones, 30 Military Version Cessnas, 4, not 1 or 2, but 4 C-130 Hercules. Those things are huge, man. How do you leave not just 1 C-130, but 4? 
You left four C 130s? 29 Brazilian made A 29 Super Tucano ground attack aircraft. 208 plus aircrafts in total. At least 600,000 small arms, including M 16s, M 249 saws. M24 sniper systems, 50 calibers, 1,394 M203 grenade launchers, M134 miniguns, 20 20 mm Gatling guns and ammunition, 61,000, 61,000, listen to this, 61,000 M203 grenade rounds, 20,040 grenades, howitzers, Mortars with thousands of rounds, 162,000 pieces of encrypted military communications gear. And this is by far the worst to me. All out of all the weapons, out of all the all, the the choppers, the C-130s. You want to know what it is? They left 16,000 night vision goggles. People need to realize that our military owns the night. Because of these goggles. These night vision goggles made our military operations so deadly and so effective. Because we can fight in the dark. You know how how big of advantage that is over the enemy? These people, they don't have night vision goggles. But now they got 16,000 of them. The night vision goggles, to me, are probably one of the most deadliest pieces of equipment that we left in Afghanistan. And we left 16,000 of them. And not only that, but it's the newest technology night vision scopes. So not only did we leave goggles, but we left night vision scopes so that they can mount them onto the M24 sniper systems that we left or the 50 caliber rifle systems that we left. It's incredible. And the list goes on. Here, let's let's keep going. They left thermal scopes and thermal mono goggles. So they got thermal goggles now. (sighs) 10,000. 10,000 2.75 inch air to ground rockets, infrared reconnaissance equipment, laser aiming units, explosive ordnance, including C4, Semtex, detonators, and shape charges, thermite, incendiaries, AP, API, and APIT, 2,520 bombs. Administration encrypted cell phones and laptops, all operational. Pallets with millions of dollars in U.S. currency. Millions of rounds of ammunition, including but not limited to 20,150,600 rounds of 7x62 millimeter. That is AK-47 rounds, their weapon of choice. That is, it is it, I mean, it is just so incredible. At least if you were to leave 223 ammo, which is 556, at least you would have a little bit of a doubt they would be using them because they don't use the M4 platforms over there. They use the AK 47. But we left 20 million AK 47 rounds. <sighs> we left 9 million rounds of 50 caliber ammo. A large stockpile of plate carriers and body armor. U.S. military, hand, and this one, this one's a big one too. You ready for this? U.S. military handheld identity detection equipment with biometrics. Ladies and gentlemen, they have all the biometrics data. All the bio data that they, that they gathered while we were over there for 20 freaking years, the Taliban now has in their arsenal that we left them. And then last but not least, Lots and lots of heavy equipment, including bulldozers, backhoes, dump trucks, and excavators. That's the list. And this list is all public. It's all public. You can look it up yourself. Ladies and gentlemen, the people that have this equipment now are now asking for passage across the country to assist Hamas in the annihilation of Israel with our equipment, with our weapons. And it's just unbelievable that Joe Biden 
is probably going to get behind a podium tomorrow and act like it's just no big deal. He won't even mention the Afghanistan withdrawal. He won't even mention the fact that now Iran is using all this equipment, most likely against Israelis. Our equipment. Is Joe Biden going to be held accountable for the Afghanistan withdrawal? That alone, I think, is an impeachable offense. Leaving all this equipment. But that was not enough. No, 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 that was not enough. In March, the Taliban started posting videos of the fields of military vehicles the U.S. left behind for the Taliban. Folks, I'm looking at the pictures here. It is literally trucks and military vehicles for as, for as far as the eye can see. I mean, you can't see anything else. It is just military vehicles, literally, maybe for a mile. And I'm not talking like, you know, Ford Rangers and Toyota pickups. I'm talking up-armored Humvees. The Taliban also claims that the ABU Duwana Brigade of the AI Badir Corps have already repaired over 300 military vehicles and are now ready for use. Oh yeah, and don't forget the room full of $100 bills Joe Biden left the Taliban for good measure. You can't love America and arm our enemies at the same time. It's just not possible. And I'm watching it on there. And here's a video right here. This guy is holding stacks of hundred dollar bills in his hand and shuffling through them. And there is a giant pallet of hundred dollar bills behind him. Maybe two or three pallets. I don't know. But I have no idea how much money that is. But that's got to be. It has to be in the billions. It has to be. I mean, the, ladies and gentlemen, this pallet of cash is like the size of a truck that Joe Biden left the Taliban that are now on their way to go fight Israel. To, to essentially, their, their, their aim is to destroy Israel as they're chanting death to America. This is exactly the type of, this is exactly the type of ripple effects I said was going to happen with Joe Biden's disastrous Afghanistan withdrawal. And you know what pisses me off the most? The guy hasn't mentioned the 13 soldiers' names that got killed in that debacle. He hasn't even mentioned their names. You have, what's his name? You have Millie, just retired. He takes no blame for the Afghanistan withdrawal. He said, it, it, oh, it's a bad idea. It was a bad idea. You have other advisors. I don't even know what, I have audio. See if I can find audio here. The people responsible for the Afghanistan withdrawal won't even admit that it was a mistake. Kirby. Kirby says he was proud of the response. Here, check it out. To order troops out of Afghanistan. It is with the way that this president ordered it done. There were children being killed. There were people hanging off of Air Force jets that were leaving. And you're saying that you guys are proud of the way that this mission was conducted? It doesn't proud mean of that? Proud of the fact that we got more than 124,000 people safely out of Afghanistan? You bet. Proud of the fact that American troops were able to seize control of a defunct airport and get it operational in 48 hours? You bet. Proud of the fact that we now have about 100,000 Afghans, our former allies and partners, living in this country and working towards citizenship? You bet. Now, does that mean that everything went perfect in that uh, evacuation? Of course not. I've talked about it from a, di a different podium. The after action reviews are now being reviewed by members of Congress, which will lay out things that could have gone better. Nobody's saying that everything was perfect. But there was a lot that went right. And a lot of Afghans are now living better lives in this country and other countries around the world because of the sacrifices and the work of so many. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And I'm telling you, the consequences from the Biden administration's withdrawal from Afghanistan are all showing up on Israel's front door right now as we speak. They are in a full-blown kinetic combat situation right now boots on the ground Netanyahu released a hundred thousand reservists for battle 
They're in combat right now as, as I'm recording the show. This is a monumental moment. This is, they're comparing this to a 9-11 moment. That's how geographically changing this is. It's, it's really incredible. And I think, I think people need to know that because of Joe Biden's disastrous withdrawal from Afghanistan, Israel may be taking incoming from our weapons and ammunition. So we'll see what happens. As of right now, you're seeing absolute just devastating videos on social media. Some of the stuff is just, it's disgusting. They're going in and murdering families inside their homes. They're tying up women and throwing them onto the hoods of the Humvees and the motorcycles. They're throwing them on the back of motorcycles. They're riding around town. They're damn near beaten to death, tied up. You have people being kidnapped, men, women, children being slaughtered inside their homes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, you know, I find it kind of ironic how all this happens just weeks after the Biden administration releases $6 billion to the Tehran. And when we called it out, because the American people aren't dumb, like when somebody releases billions of dollars to a country that hates you, to our enemies, like that's a dumb idea. That's a dumb thing to do, regardless if it's for hostages or not. It's even dumber when it's for hostages, because now you're paying a terrorist organization for hostages. And so what does that mean? That means they're going to want more hostages. And so it incentivizes them to go out and kidnap more people so that they can get more money from the Biden administration. Look, I'm telling you, folks, this guy, the Biden administration is probably one of the most destructive presidential administrations this country has ever seen, hands down. Every single aspect of this country is worse. This is the price the American people have to pay because people could not get a grip on their emotions. I don't know about you, but I sure could use some mean tweets right about now and the world being in peace and this country prosperous. I'm sorry, I would much rather deal with Donald Trump, the orange man, calling the media fake news, but living a peaceful, prosperous life. We don't have any of that here. Meanwhile, these people are going to come out on stage and tell you how bad Donald Trump is. And I think it's so sickening. It is so shocking to me. That the one guy, the one guy that was never, ever in politics, a true outsider for the first time in U.S. history since George Washington, a true outsider becomes president in this country and gives this country four years of peace and prosperity. And how does he get repaid? By Joe Biden, the person destroying this country, doing the exact opposite creating war and destruction and heartache and misery on the American people is trying to throw that man in jail for the rest of his life. What is wrong with these people? We are reaching sick, evil levels in this society. Sick and evil. They are so deranged. They are so delusional. They will never, ever come out and admit that voting for Joe Biden was a bad, bad idea, ever. I don't even expect him to. I will leave that for the history books because there is no doubt, there is no doubt that Joe Biden and the Biden administration will go down as the worst presidential administration in this country's history. And not just worst on the economy aspect, although that's bad and it's probably the worst, just on a level of destruction alone. The amount of damage that this administration has caused, not just this country, but around the world. Because of the Joe Biden administration, you have hundreds of thousands of people dying around the world. As a direct result of Joe Biden winning the election. And I'm not even I, I don't even I'm not even being hyperbolic. 
because the Russia-Ukraine war would never be happening, and you have hundreds of thousands of people being sent to their death over there. Because Joe Biden wants to say, oh, a, a small incursion is one thing, essentially greenlighting the invasion of Ukraine by the psychopath Putin. Russia will be held accountable if it invades, and it depends on what it does. It's one thing if it's a minor incursion, and then we end up having a fight about what to do and not do, etc. You said that Russia would be held accountable if it invades, and it depends on what it does. Are you saying that a minor incursion by Russia into Ukrainian territory would not lead to the sanctions that you have threatened, or are you effectively giving Putin permission to make a small incursion into the country? <laughs> Good question. <laughs> Um, so it did sound like, didn't it? And now you have this. Because the Biden administration was so punch drunk. They were so... <clears throat> the Biden administration was so dedicated in getting us back into another Iran nuclear deal that they were essentially bending the knee to the number one sponsor of state terrorism, Iran giving them everything they wanted, including releasing $6 billion just a few weeks ago. Which I don't think anybody can deny is the direct result of this military invasion by Hamas against Israel. And so because of this action, now China is drooling at the mouth to go after Taiwan, which we said this too, you're most likely going to see that in the upcoming months, probably around election time. My, my, my. I can't, I really don't understand how any of this can be on accident. I really don't. Because if you were going to create as much chaos as, as, as possible, you would do exactly what this administration, and not just this administration, but the Democrat Party as a whole, these people are ideologically committed to whatever the Democrat Party does and whatever Joe Biden does. Okay, they are the merchants of chaos. They project onto their enemies what they themselves are guilty of. They call Republicans merchants of chaos. When in fact, it is us, it is the conservatives, it is, it is the Republicans who are actually the stability in this country. We are the merchants of stability. It's the Democrats and the Biden administration and the radical left who are the merchants of chaos. And all you need to do to prove that is just look around. Go down the list of all the events that have taken place since Joe Biden took his hand off that Bible. Absolutely atrocious. Death, destruction, fraud, schemes. All the worst. I mean, pure evil. Evil things have happened since Joe Biden took his hand off that Bible. And I'm not even going to mention the amount of misery and destruction the Biden administration has caused us as Americans, as American citizens. People are not sinking. They are drowning out there between inflation, interest rates. The economy is a freaking disaster. We're not too far off from another freaking depression. And in fact, you have financial analysts saying we're, we're close to a depression. All it, the only thing holding up our money right now is the fact that people still believe that our money is valuable. That is it. Our money is just paper because we're not on the gold standard anymore. Our money, our currency is not backed by gold at all. The only thing that makes our money valuable is the fact that people think it's valuable. That's it. Other than that, it's just green paper. Very, very high quality green paper. That is it. And then you have these other countries like BRICS. They're actually creating a gold-backed currency. They're trying to. Why? So that they can drop our currency. And when that happens, it's going to be a financial crisis. It is going to be a collapse in our currency unlike we've ever seen before. What the, the, the amount of damage this administration has done is will, will linger on for decades, probably a hundred years. So you're talking, you're, if you're listening to this, you're talking our kids' kids 
are going to be feeling the effects of the Biden administration. And these people are out there telling you, lying to the American people. These people are out there, all their influencers on Twitter, all their their paid for influencers on YouTube, all the talking heads at the White House and all the people in the cabinet saying, oh, yeah, you should definitely want to vote for Joe Biden again. Yeah, Donald Trump, that Donald Trump's a fascist. Yeah, yeah. Donald Trump's a fascist. So you should want to vote for another four years of this. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't think this country can handle another four years of this. I'm going to I'll be dead honest. I really don't know where this country will be if we have to go through if Joe Biden wins the 2024 election. I really don't. I don't even know if this country will be here in another four years at this rate. I, I really don't. At this rate, I don't know. I don't see anything positive with this administration. And in fact, Democrats can't even find anything positive with this administration. That is why they have to come out and tell you not to believe your lying eyes. They have to come out and tell you, oh, the Biden administration is just going well. It's swimmingly. And people are looking at each other and being like, we're like, what? What are these people talking about? These people are delusional. Delusional. They are 100% committed to this, to their ideology. They are 100% committed to voting for Joe Biden. They will never, ever, ever admit that voting for Joe Biden was a bad idea. And it's stuff like this that just solidifies my opinions on the 2020 election. I know that the American people are smart. Millions of people are gullible. You know, the Democrats, they're like a bunch of sheep. They're like a bunch of drones. But the American people as a whole are not dumb people. They understand the situation. Like they understand the gravity of it. They don't, they may not know the intricate parts of it. They may not know the details. But when you have over 70% of the American people say this country is going in the wrong direction, the American people are not dumb. And so I know that the American people knew voting for Joe Biden would give the results that we're seeing right now. And so that is why I think the Democrats cheated in the 2020 election. They rigged that election. And this is exactly what happens when you rig an election and you get the wrong guy in the White House. A, a guy that should not be commander in chief, a guy that is not a leader. He's not smart. He is a very dumb, weak, feeble old man and corrupt. And the American people knew that. But the Democrats were just they were just able to rig it just enough to get them across the finish line. And this is exactly what the American people get. It is sick. I would not be behind this microphone right now. I would not be behind this microphone right now if Joe Biden was doing a good job. I wouldn't. I would not. If Joe Biden came in, gave this country a good economy, brought it back, started creating peace, built the wall, secured our borders, got us out of Afghanistan with no death and destruction, united the country, I wouldn't even be here. I wouldn't. And in all reality, honestly, I see Joe Biden sailing to a 2024 election win. I see Joe Biden sailing into a second term if he was actually doing a good job. But this man is absolutely atrocious. And it is a shame that the American people have to pay the ultimate price. And what is even more a shame is that the one guy that gave this country the best years it's seen in decades, that gave this country peace and prosperity, this man, Joe Biden, and his pack of wolves are trying to imprison for the rest of his life. That is how America repays Donald Trump for giving this country the best years it's seen in decades. Is by throwing him in prison? No, 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 man. This is, this is sick. We are dealing with some sick puppies here, man. We are, we are dealing with some sick and delusional people. So, all right, ladies and gentlemen, I just wanted to get on here. All this stuff is breaking news, so I'm going to be releasing this tonight. I got another show I'm working on right after this. I'm going to be releasing tomorrow. Um, I want to get into a bunch of stuff that has happened. There's, there's, trust me, there's no shortage of news to go through. But again, I want to 
I want to touch down on a couple things tomorrow, a couple important things um, that I think the mainstream media kind of passed up on because it's it's those issues, it's those news stories that they pass on are the ones you need to pay the most attention to because they're passing it up for a reason. Nothing these people do is on accident. You have to think of the media, the mainstream media like CNN, MSNBC, the Pravda left media is just an arm of the administrative state, an arm of the police state. That is it. It is like the government having its own media outlets. They are 100 percent committed to pushing the propaganda for the Joe Biden administration and the Democrat Party. And so anytime they pass up on a story, I always reread it, I go through it and see why they passed on it. And then I like talking about the stories they get really pissed off that the other side is talking about. That's usually a good topic too, because that means you're over the target. So again, we got a lot of stuff to get into. If you got any questions, get a hold of me, Stephen Toriello Show at gmail.com. Uh, if you could, I would appreciate it. Go to Rumble, follow the show on Rumble. I'm trying to get more followers on Rumble so I can get the private URL. Once we get the private URL, then we could start making websites and all that good stuff. Also, if you could follow the show on Facebook, we're starting to pick up some steam on Facebook. I'm, I'm starting to post a lot more content there and also any other social media platform. Follow the show on everything. We're out. I'm, the show's out on every social media platform. Uh, same thing with a podcast. It's on every podcast platform. And I'm going to be hopping back on here in just a minute to record tomorrow's show. And we're going to be talking about all kinds of good stuff. So number one thing, everybody should say a prayer for the people in Israel tonight because, like I said, they are in 100% full kinetic combat as you're listening to the show right now. So send a prayer out to them, and let's just hope these aren't the beginning days of World War III, man. Yeah, I, <sighs> but I truly do believe the Biden administration needs to pay the political price for this because this is no doubt all of the Biden administration's fault. All of his all of his staff, all of the people he has surrounding him, like Jake Sullivan, Victoria Newland, all these people are very bad, evil people. They are not good people. They are warmongers. They are merchants of death and they profit off death and destruction. And so I cannot think of a worse administration at a at a worse time. So. All right, ladies and gentlemen, as always, thank you for tuning in. I want you guys to have a good weekend. Get some rest on Sunday. It is the day of rest. And I'll be talking to you guys here in a little bit. So have a good day. God bless you. And God bless America. You guys have a good day. Bye-bye.